Hello, everyone, hey, and guys. welcome to day two with the wonderful and one and only Mustafa Tajuddin. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. I was rehearsing that of many times right she before, was, five yeah. seconds before we went live. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm your host, Jessica Moon. I'm a senior design manager on the Adobe XD team. And Mustafa is a fantastic, wonderful product designer uh, with pg and mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, and so before we kind of get into recapping what we did yesterday, uh, I just want to make a quick calls to the fact that in 30 minutes, stay tuned, we'll do a quick chat and win again. So 100 free 3x3 three three stickers from uh, die cuts, by the way, from Sticker Mule. And so that we'll do in 30 minutes. All you have to do is say something in a chat and you'll get a chance to win those stickers. And then we are also doing, if you were tuning in for our earlier stream today with Sam, a creative challenge number three. And today's creative challenge is designing a dashboard or design that displays your water and waste and energy consumption in your community or building and trying to create a gamified experience for it to encourage people to be smarter about their um, usage of, of resources. So stick around for that. We'll review some of the submissions. Um, all you have to do is post your submission on Discord and we'll take a look. I'm so excited to see that, the submissions. Yes, yesterday's was really, really yeah. exciting. Super good. So, awesome. Well, Mustafa. Okay, so like Jessica said, um, I'm a product designer at pg and &E. I'm Mustafa. Um, so yesterday we sort of did an overview of the project, did a little mini audit of Spotify's branding, and then started some, some rough uh, wireframes. And then today, I uh, want to take those wireframes to the next level, create some higher fidelity mockups, and then do some, some interactions using auto-animate to show how easy it is to express what you're trying to do with your designs. And so we're going to continue reimagining the podcast experience on Spotify. And then I can go get out of that. Um, let's see. Look at how beautiful they are. But And they came from this. Yeah, they <laughs> came from this. <laughs> Which is also beautiful. You yeah, know, beautiful, there's, there's beauty beautiful in sketches. Yes, um, yes. So just the recap of the idea. So when it comes to Spotify, you have music, you have podcasts, the idea is to allow people to see these previews so they're able to get these sort of bite-sized snippets of podcasts without committing to like an hour-long uh, session and they can kind of see whether they want to actually listen to the podcast or not. And then the other feature idea is to have sort of a live podcast where people are able to join the conversation or maybe become a character on a podcast mm -hmm. episode. Mm -hmm. So based on that, we yesterday we came up with some different options. So we had um, different played around with some different ways people can access the podcast and music uh, functions on on Spotify. So you have this tap bar, and then previously we had where's the pill? We had a pill. <laughs> <laughs> based on contributions from the, chat. from the chat, which yeah. by the way, hello, welcome back, Julia, Eric, we see you all in the chat. Hi, Justin and Richard. Cornelian, look at that. All the folks that contributed towards this wow. fantastic pill yeah. that then got, well, yeah. an executive decision on your part. To you know, <laughs> the pill we had to let, <laughs> we had to let go, um, but we do have pills in the UI still. Mm -hmm. So pills did not die, they just are not a part of the <laughs> navigation. <laughs> um, but it's, it's good to play around with different options to see yeah. what works best. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of stuck with the idea of having this drop down. Mm -hmm. And then as you click it, you see the options to either go to music mm -hmm. or to go to podcast mm -hmm. and then having this option once you go to podcast to see episodes. And then down here you have a section for viewing live episodes. Ah. Then I changed I it see from- see you took some of that feedback yesterday yeah. that Val and others gave with yeah. the red. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this was where I started off, okay. sort of this like card yep. um, view for live episodes, but based on the feedback, I incorporated a different design for 
showing off these live podcast episodes. And then once you dive into these episode snippets, um, started working on the wireframes for uh, how you would view them. Mm -hmm. So you sort of swipe through these uh, snippets. And then if you want to listen to the actual episode, you can go to the episode details page. And then have some wireframes yeah, for it's really the, come together. The live podcast. Yep, yep. Oh, and look, there's the conversation stream. Very exciting. Yes. Nice. And hello, Wendy, Joanna. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Hi. All right. So we have basically a bunch of um, basically from the sketches that we made yesterday and the wireframes. A bit more of those components coming in. A bit more uniformity, and we're going to be seeing you flesh out a lot of those details today. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So coming here, I got started on applying visual treatments and artwork. Oh. So this is closer to what the intended design will end up looking like. So recently okay. played Heavy Rotation. If you use Spotify, this is the yep. same. Yeah. Um, I have yeah. to ask, mm -hmm. I always want to know with um, placeholders, you know, are they just random or do they, are they your favorites? Like where, where are these coming from? Are these actually things you love? So these are pretty random okay. on the, pack, the podcast. <laughs> they look pretty. <laughs> yeah, they, they look nice and wanted a lot of colors. Yeah. So these are just random photos. Okay. But um, I do like some of these, oh. like getting curious with John, Jonathan Van Ness. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then... I think that was the only one that I listened to mm -hmm. on this one. Mm -hmm. They're kind of random all over the place. Have you heard of any of these podcasts? You know, I have heard of them. I just haven't actually literally heard Listen, them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Again, one. I'm just getting into it, right? So, yeah. yeah. This one, I was like, Inside, Inside Psycho. Inside Psycho. I don't know what that is oh, about. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So going through... Um, just gonna sort of polish this a little more, mm -hmm. add in sort of relevant placeholder text, and then we'll sort of dive into trying to make this into mm -hmm. an uh, interactive prototype. Nice, yep. So I guess we can start here. Yeah. So we have this song artist. This comes from the way Spotify handles their um, audio information. Mm -hmm. So. Currently, you have this device is available underneath song artists. They're not the same, so probably should work on this. And welcome, Nick Nam. And yes, oh, Julia likes the borders on the new episodes. I know we <laughs> saw the kind of grayscale thing, but they're really kind of polishing them up. Notice oh, yeah, that little... they're rounded corners there, and oh, they've got a bit of a gradient treatment yeah, a on them. Gradient. Very subtle, but very nice. Yes, I also like them too, Julia. I think they're fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Um, what's this song? What is this song? <laughs> <laughs> what's your, what about your theme song? Oh, you're right. I was gonna do Happy by Pharrell because I remember someone. So yeah, well that was, uh, I think Julia said that that was hers if I recall correctly. Well, yeah. But Unbreakable is your theme, right? Yeah. Unbreakable Smile. Unbreakable Smile. And if you aren't with us today, yesterday, um, for some reason, there was a quick question <laughs> brought up of what is the song that best, what did you ask, that best depicts who you are? Yeah, so if you had to introduce yourself as a song, what, what would, that would that song, song be? be? And for you, it was Unbreakable Smile. Yeah. And I basically deflected, right? <laughs> and I'm still deflecting. And I was actually yeah. going to reach out to you yesterday to, to see what that song is, because I wanted oh, to listen to it before yeah, the stream yeah, today. Yeah. I'll give it to you later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Val's is still Monster Mash. <laughs> I think that makes for a great icebreaker of, hey, if I were a song, you know, what would I be? And then you introduce yourself and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, it'd be great. Like all the people who like, love music from the same album. It'd be hard to kind of distinguish between songs that you love and songs that are you, though, you know? Interesting. Cause that I, is true. Yes, yes. Because you could love some really weird songs that yes. have nothing to do with who you are. Uh, yeah, person. and that's definitely the case. <laughs> we sometimes, so um, I don't know how you guys do brainstorms with other people in the room, but sometimes what we'll do is We'll get in the room and we'll do like um, like more like silent brainstorming while we're doing work. And um, some will be like, we need to play some music. And so uh, we would do these like Russian roulette buttons where you just kind of 
hit shuffle and then hit play across your all your playlists. Wow. <laughs> and it makes for a really funny thing because people judge you pretty fast. Yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and you're like, no, it's just my workout right. song. <laughs> you're like, oh, I did not expect that to come <laughs> from my like, coworker. You don't say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have like, um, I have a really interesting set of music I listen to, and there's just it's literally like different people. It feels like when you look at. Um, my playlist, mm -hmm. and so uh, so I don't like doing that because then it makes for awkward conversations. <laughs> I feel like I don't actually, uh, yeah. Monster Mash is I can't recall in my head. I um, know. I think I actually have a friend that that likes that sort of music, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think I'm familiar Maybe with. Maybe I'll go listen to it. Later yeah, we'll too. we'll have to check Monster yeah. Mash out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And welcome to today's stream, Jose. Yep. Um, Hakuna Matata. Oh. The song <laughs> is very exciting. I have to admit, I do love that song. I love that song, too. I haven't seen the recent remake of that movie. <laughs> Me either, and I... I kind of am not. I, yeah, I... You too? Same. Boycotting it? Yeah. I'm boycotting yeah. it. I feel like the just... 2D animated version was... It should have been left alone. Well, it's a new generation of people, That's right? True. Who are watching these kinds of shows and they need they need that level of realness. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about Simba being a like real a realistic lion. lion. I don't know. And like a real warthog. Like yeah. all these I don't know. It just yeah. isn't that much for me. Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny. I went on this uh, like team building thing with like on a safari a bit ago, and the person on the safari was saying that they were all interested in um, the 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 accuracy of Pumbaa in the new movie because if I don't know if you know this, but a uh, really random fact: um, Pumbaa, the warthog in the animated films, is actually a combination of of that warthog and another breed because really if they're rounder warthogs, they're supposed to be this kind of gray variety. And the red ones are actually the smaller one, but if you look at Pumbaa, he's kind of like robust and big and yeah. such. And so they kind of mash the two different breeds together to make this very cool looking warthog. Um, and I was like, that's pretty fascinating. And so they were like, so these guys on this, this safari ride were like, yeah, we're all we're all super curious if, um, if they'll stick to the to the realities of life and either slim down Pumbaa or make him grayer or mm. something, I was like, that's very interesting. So yeah, had to be like yeah, powerful. Mm hmm. Yep. I see that we have some people who are saying Richard likes Eye of the Tiger. I oh. love NF and listen to his music all the time. Yep. That's a good one. Mm hmm. And so you are making some nice play buttons. Yeah, I'm trying to make a play button. Mm -hmm. Group these together. Are you a so are you a grouper? Are you a labeler? Do you are you a very organized designer? <laughs> I I actually am not an organized de designer, but I do try to label my my elements. But I wouldn't say I'm that organized. Yeah. A designer. Yeah. I don't know. If I have to pass off my designs, then I'll be considerate enough to clean them up. But if it's just me, I I might. Just chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. chaos? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a good skill to have. I think chaos is a great skill yeah. to have. I think you could spin it as just creative, unleashed, mm. imaginative, right. exploratory. I yes. Think so. Yes. There are a lot of Monster Mash fans in the chat, it seems. Wow. <laughs> So we so we're behind then. We need to like actually know this song. I am behind on everything that relates <laughs> to relevancy on pop culture. I'm not gonna deny it. So when people talk I'm not gonna lie, like when people talk about cool new hip things in chat, I'm just like, I need, <laughs> <laughs> I need a little more description. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anyone in the chat can like provide a s description of this song, but we would yeah. love it. I once recently so actually my adversity to podcasts is really funny because um in addition to podcasts, I think I just, it, I hesitate to watch like YouTube videos. Um, 
Really? Well, I say that with like a asterisk. I mean, um, like if someone, if someone says, hell, you have to watch this really funny thing. And then I, and I look at the video and it's three minutes long. I'm just like, is that too is much of a, a is commitment? Is there a GIF format here? <laughs> you know, and then, um, and so I would do that a lot. And that's probably why it took me so long to get into podcasts, which is really weird because I like uh, movies and I love TV shows. It's just, I think it's just, um, I don't know. But anyway, where I was going with that is um, in terms of being in a cave, in terms of being up to date, is that I, <laughs> there is someone who posted this list of like the most popular YouTubes of the past like three years. And I literally entered this list of like 50 different YouTube videos and I knew four of them. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, I kind of looked at that and I was like, yeah, maybe I should, maybe I should be more up to date. But I feel like there's some sort of like benefit in not knowing. In being oblivious? Yeah. Hmm. I think there's some some sort of benefit. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, st I'm still trying to figure it out. At least in social parties, I don't see the benefit. But, but yes, <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> there's there's always you know you can always make lemonade from lemons. So. Well, I've just learned to smile and nod until the context comes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a skill. That's the skill. That's Learning the skill? how to be in a conversation oh, and not know. Oh, that hamster video. You know, mm -hmm. Because that <laughs> that comes in handy when you're like actually having a conversation with someone important, and you're like, I have to know what I'm talking about, yep. or at least look like yep. I know what I'm talking about. So, guys, I'm just going in, adding the sort of placeholder text really quickly. What's going on? Yeah. Ooh, Martha, my heart. <laughs> Marissa goes. I wouldn't say monster mash. It's hyper recent. What does that mean, though? Does that mean that? Does that we're mean we're just, way too late? We're way. I think <laughs> we're too, like really behind. way too late. <laughs> I think Monster Mash is yeah. actually from the '90s, oh. if I'm if I'm correct. So I don't know. Well, okay. I mean, sometimes I don't pay attention to titles, so maybe maybe we do know it. We just don't know it's called Monster Mash. Maybe. Uh, it's probably just best to not talk about Monster Mash, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, as Val mentioned, we do have Chat and Win in just 12, 13 minutes. So um, stay tuned. Well, let's pose a question. And mm. when you answer it, you'll be in it, submitted for the prize and a chance to win 100 free 3x3 three three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. So think of what sticker you'd want, what the answer to the question will be. What are we going to ask people today? I know, we, we had it figured out yesterday, which was convenient, but Zodiac now, signs? Oh no, it was podcast. It was podcast, we did talk about Zodiac signs. That was signs. great. You know, do people, you know, the podcasts, I think there was a really interesting discussion around podcasts, um, but I guess one question is, what's a podcast that you're interested in hearing that you haven't heard yet, you know? Because mm. we probably have a lot. And hello, Jason. Welcome to uh, the stream today from Costa Rica. Awesome. Whoa, that's amazing. Very fun. I would love to be in Costa Rica right now. Yeah. I always love where everyone comes from in the channel. That's why I always make sure not to say that it's noon here because it is not <laughs> noon from where folks are coming in. And so, yeah, Costa Rica is awesome. So is that, a, oh, I see, a lovely. So you've incorporated, nice. Oh, look at that, family style, yep, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never heard of family style, mm -hmm. but I really like the color palette that paints. Yes. It's like very minimalist and mm -hmm. graphic. Ah, Marissa, thank you. For those of you who are curious, Monster Mash came out in 1962. Okay, we're way Whoa. behind. <laughs> that is... Covered by the Beach Boys. Oh, wow, I do actually feel that this style is feeling very familiar. I feel like I'm going to be in deep shame after this stream when I listen <laughs> to it, and I'm like, oh, that's Monster Mash. Yes, I absolutely know what that is. But I think I heard it at a Halloween party yeah. uh, last year. I kind of, I think I actually have it in my head now. I think I actually... You Maybe do know. I do know it. I just didn't know the title. Mm -hmm. The 1999 one. That's probably the one in my head. And hello, Visuals by Ruby from Virginia. 
Ooh, Nick Nam nice. says it's 11 p.m. here. Julia says it's 9 p.m. here. Awesome. Yeah, it's. Thanks for doing the chat. 12:30, 12:20 here in San Francisco. Yeah, 9 p.m. Where else are people calling in from? It must be night. It's very bright in the studio here, so. Yes. Um, so it feels <laughs> like daytime. It is daytime. Yeah, it is daytime. Me too. And hello, Hassam. Welcome, welcome. For those of you who are just joining in, Mustafa is working on a fantastic new set of features within uh, Spotify, reimagined around podcasts. So, right now, doing the old way of mm -hmm. just <laughs> typing it. Yeah, it's always fun to kind of make up. The te like if you have placeholder text, right? There's a lot of different ways people handle it. Um, some people use like lorem ipsum or stuff like that. Other people have um, you know generators that they use, mm -hmm. like and such. And then sometimes when you're just on the fly like this, I just kind of pull from like my favorite TV shows and I start throwing <laughs> in like you know some people use their team members as like the the people. I do that a lot. Yeah, and then you're yeah. like. That, and then you use a different avatar, right? Yeah. So, so you use a completely different avatar that's just randomly pulled off the internet, yeah. and then you have the name of your teammate. And it's just weird if you know your teammate, because you're like, what? Yeah, they yeah. like end up in your design, and they don't even know it. Hell yeah. No, I, I pull people from real life in my designs a lot. In terms of like <laughs> using names, I don't even mm -hmm. think. I'm just like, whose name could I use in this design today? Mm -hmm. And welcome, Seth. Wow, coming from Athens, Georgia. Nice. Oh, someone from the south. Cindy, watching from North Virginia. Fantastic. Nice. And Jason was not logged into his own account, but is now logged into his own account. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. I'm glad you're here with us. Watching from LA or Los Angeles. Yep. Ooh, I love LA. Valentina. Cheers to adulting sounds like a really good podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you actually know, fun little fact around that, mm -hmm. I was, as I was watching you do this, that you can actually create a text file and have a list of whatever you want strings and just like drag it over the way you with images and then wow. it populates them in a repeat grid. No, I didn't know that. It's a very fun fact, yeah. I think it's one of those more like pro tips that not a lot of people do. Although it is very fun just making names ad hoc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. yep. I know you can do the photos, but I didn't know that you can actually do it with strings as well. That's yeah, really cool. I can I can actually attempt it. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while since I did this. Let me <laughs> see. All right, so if we look at my screen for a second, let me also open text editor. So I have a text file open, and I'm going to say um, I will do what I always do, which is name, use fictional people. So um, Fox Mulder. Dana Scully, CJ Craig. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> it's from some of the shows that I watch. Um, and then I'll just do a couple more like, oh, I always for some reason have Bob the Mountain Man stuck in my head. Whoa. Don't know where Bob the Mountain Man came from, but it's kind <laughs> of a thing. And so you save this, oops, um, you save this as a, uh, let me delete this copy, I didn't mean to do that. Um, an actual text kind of thing. So let me just put this on my desktop. Um, names, and then you can just put it as, I never remember how to actually make this just like standard text, but I can just do it real quick. Mm. And I just convert it to format and make it plain text. So you make a plain text file and then you go into here and you decide that you're gonna have um, a text field that says name, let me zoom in here. And then you have an object like this that's like maybe an avatar of some sort. Mm -hmm. And we'll just go ahead and make that like that. And the way it works is um, I'm just going to group these for the sake of grouping. And this is my little component that has like an avatar and a name. 
And I can actually go ahead and make a repeat grid. And um, this is like the magical repeat grid, yeah, whatever. Love the repeat grid. Um, and if you notice, like the titles here are actually also repeated. And so this string is actually, um, you can actually overwrite it. So everybody, or not everybody, but a lot of people know that if you go to, um, you know, if you go and you type in a search for cats, and then you have, you know, a bunch of pictures of cats. One, two, three. Whoa, that's kind of scary. <laughs> oh, wow, some of these cats are very <laughs> scary. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go back here. Yeah. And then you go to um, pictures. So a lot of people know with repeat grid, you can actually do mm -hmm. this, where you take a bunch of photos, and you bring them in, and then they basically populate them in a string. But you can actually do the same with text. And so that text file, I saved it hopefully on my desktop. I don't know, I just did the same thing twice. <laughs> um, I, it's because it's a shortcut, I use shortcuts a lot. And so yeah. there's that, you can't see it because my background's so complicated. But right there is that little file that says names. And if I drag it in here, you can actually hover it over a text field and it'll populate that list of strings wow. as well. Which is really handy if you are, for example, you have that go-to list of names mm -hmm. that you wanna use. Maybe it's all your coworkers or friends, or maybe it's like an actual base of customers, like fake customers yeah. and such. Super handy trick for um, using the repeat grid with actual like data. That so. is super, super handy. Mm -hmm. I will yeah. definitely incorporate that. Into so just a little fact, but yeah. So if we can see, Ah, uh, yes. Nice. So, looking at your screen, you basically have a bunch of... Are you going to keep those gradients? Are you going to... I was thinking so, because I was trying to follow, like, what Spotify does mm -hmm. when they uh, have these gradients that are tied mm -hmm. to the, the image that is being or the cover image for mm -hmm. each episode or song. You can expand it, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. the, like gradient thing going on. Yeah, yeah. And yes, there were really funny cats and chat and one is coming up in two minutes. So just as a reminder, yeah, maybe if we can go look at Mustafa's screen for a second, we could look at these. Right, so you are into just keeping them plain. I know in the Spotify UI, sometimes they have like, even with the videos lately. How do you feel about that? The videos, yeah, on, taking up the backgrounds of like, um, the pre yeah, yeah. I like when you listen to songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't use it anymore. But I when it first when I first experienced it, I thought it was really cool. But mm -hmm. I just turned it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too distracting. Yeah, yeah. A bit distracting. And and I at that point I was like I just want to mm -hmm. listen to the song. Um, mm -hmm. But it is a good feature. I don't know. It's. It's a slippery slope, I think, because mm -hmm. you can just go to YouTube to, to watch videos yeah. or whatever, so Spotify. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, so back zooming in so our folks can see it here. Look at these lovely gradients. So the gradients, the logic is whatever image, the gradient will sort of be relevant to the color scheme used in the image for the cover. So. Mm -hmm. This one. Oh, I see. So kind of like an algorithmic sort of whatever's in the thing and trying to figure yeah. out. Mm -hmm. So come in, move that to the side a little bit, just just so it's not a straight forward a gradient. A little pro tip. Yeah. Make it a little bit extra polish. Yeah. Not a perfect linear gradient. Right. Lovely, um, lovely. Then I actually want to flip. Thank you, Aaron. Darker. Aaron thinks that this project is looking very nice after having just tuned in. And Thank welcome you, to the stream. Yes. So yeah, it's a little polish like that, right? Where you just angle the gradient that makes it really all just come together yeah. and sing. Sometimes we rely on the defaults too much and we, we forget that if just tweaking it a little bit could add that bit of polish to the end. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Mm-hmm. Make it a little darker, that way you can still see the text. Mm-hmm. Angle it a little bit. Nice. Um, yesterday we, uh, we were discussing um, like font puns, font and so puns. I included this between the covers between the because covers. I can That's so just cute. assume that this is <sighs> all puns about like ways of talking about books yes. and yeah. creative ways. Julia's asking what the chat and one question is going to be. I don't know, Mustafa. What do you think? What is the chat in question? We're at the countdown now. We're done. Okay. The chat in one question.
question could be... Why do you like your favorite song? That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't have a question made, so I'm like, how about to keep it on how about me. why you like your favorite song or what is your favorite song? Yeah. One of those two. Yeah. Chatting wins right now. It's a hundred free stickers to three by three die cuts with sticker mule. So, um, you know, you'll have a chance to just type in anything. Type in anything. Ideally, your favorite song. Yeah, your favorite and why. song. Hopefully. Yeah. Kelly Clarkson is what I, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, yes, yeah, someone. It could be I a know. person too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like Kelly Clarkson's song. Type in your name, Billy Eilish. Yep, Eilish. Um, too many also counts. Type in whatever you want right now. Chat and win. You get a couple more seconds left. Go, go, go. Going to California by Lady Iris Zeppelin. by Goo Goo Dolls. Mm -hmm. She did a great job on SNL. <laughs> 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 Billy. I love I, Billie Eilish, actually. I totally had a Billie Eilish song stuck in my, uh, um, when I was listening on a plane and I fell asleep to it, and I'm pretty sure Spa is gonna, Fi is gonna be like, this is your favorite song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I fell asleep to her song on repeat. She's super cool. Yeah, so. yeah. Let's dance with David Bowie, yes. Ooh, that's typing, a good one. <laughs> typing. <laughs> typing. <laughs> which could be the name of a song, by the way. Chat and win, Adele, good old. Up oh, and there we have our winner, Joanna Mendez. Congratulations, yay! Joanna, you are now the fantastic winner of 100 three by three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. So uh, keep an eye out on Behance, and our team will reach out to you and let you know how to get those. And same with yesterday, for those of you who were not Joanna. It's okay, because we <laughs> now have all these wonderful songs, and we also have a coupon for you. Just go to stickermule.com forward slash Adobe Live 19, and you can actually get 10 stickers for a dollar just by using this code. So wow. everybody congratulate Joanna. You have now won a bajillion stickers, Woo. actually technically 100, <laughs> um, not right. a bajillion. Said that expectation. <laughs> 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 and everyone else, you know, you can get stickers from here. And the 10 for a dollar is still great. So feel free to go and use that code. <laughs> nice. Someone posted Baby Shark. Baby Shark. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar. Oh, I love his recent album. I love album. Kendrick Lamar, too. So good. Who Feels It Knows It by Jimmy Cliff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never heard that one. This is brand new. How I feel. That's how I feel. You feel brand new? I'm glad you feel brand new, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get there. <laughs> All right, so we have a triangle. So, <laughs> we do. We do have a triangle. I'm trying to turn it into. Yep. Oops. And people are saying the names of their songs. They like, like, don't stop believe. It was like believing is just now. It's in my head, and I just want to like, you know, just like <laughs> play some music and and just listen while watching you design. That'd be very fun. So it's a, oh, it's a pointy A. It's trying a carrot to, A. Trying to make like a paper airplane. On the oh, fly. okay. So don't judge me. I, you know, it's <laughs> fine. It, uh, we were going to get there. We're, we're going to get there. Let's see. Hi, Joe. Welcome to the stream. Mm hmm. Oh, it's flying. Yeah. By rotating it. I was like, shh. I see. I see. I see. A very abstract plane. Yes. Well, paper airplanes. So airplane. Well. Yep. Do you uh, like to make your icons from scratch, or do you have a place that you tend to go for icons, or have a favorite set? Yeah. So if I was really trying to make an icon, I probably would use Illustrator because it's it's easier to get mm -hmm. granular with Illustrator. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then drag them into mm -hmm. XD. Um, but as you know now, projects has good ones that you can get SVGs to edit and mm -hmm. change. Do you have a favorite place for it? I don't. I think I I think I used to be the type that would like a set, but then everyone's set started to all look the same. The same. And so now I just kinda go for the most expressive and 
Honestly, mm. my go-to lately has, if it's not like a system font or like a set that's like a font family, I'll mm. just go to the Noun Project and I'll just search it and then it'll either inspire me to use one of theirs that I see or it'll inspire me to just like make my own based mm. off of something I see there. Yeah. So, um, but honestly for that, we actually have a fantastic team here and, and very talented designers who just do great iconography. And so they're super that's talented. So, nice. They'd be like, plain? <laughs> <laughs> it's like 50 different kinds. Right, you just grab and so, like, yeah, I don't yeah. think about it as much. But when I do have to make my own icon, I do typically go to the Noun Project yeah. or use one of those fonts. Yeah. So there's my crude plane. Cute. Let's see. What if I had a shadow? Mm. Shadow. How do you feel about shadows? You know, I don't know if you know this, but one of the, our streamers, an evangelist, Paul, he has very specific opinions around drop shadows. Let's talk about them a lot, actually. What What is he? What is his? He POV. has a he has a very specific eye for a type of drop shadow with a type of property value, and if it's not that, then it's not a good looking drop shadow. Interesting. But I don't remember what they were. I'm not <laughs> sure if you would if your drop shadow would be considered a nice drop shadow or an ugly drop shadow in his eyes. Okay. Yeah, Wendy says icon monster too, which is a great one. Yep, absolutely. Nice. Yeah. I don't know, it's funny. I used to have a go-to for icon sets and nowadays with plugins and just being able to just pull whatever, yeah. it's, it's there's so many options. Um, is that a person? Yeah, I'm trying to make like a makeshift person. <laughs> <laughs> How cute. Yeah. Oh, that looks like a person. I mean, I knew right away. It's like the, the typical abstract. The abstract blob. No sharp corners. Which kind of right now could also look like um, a one-eyed cyclops with a frowny face. <laughs> not that anymore. Is true. Not anymore. Now that you got rid of the square. It's like the new form of looking at clouds and making an uh, idea of what they are. Is looking at icons. And yeah. It's like a Rorschach test. It's like, what do you see when you see <laughs> this? You when you see this icon, <laughs> do you see a plane, <laughs> or do you see something else? Right now, I see a cyclops with a frowny face. Let's see. I still see a cyclops. I can't unsee the <laughs> cyclops see. with the frowny face. Let us know in the chat if, if <laughs> Jessica has ruined your, <laughs> your understanding. I mean, doesn't it? It looks like a like there's like a big eyeball, and then and then there's a frowny face. But obviously, if you didn't. If you aren't in the stream or hearing me <laughs> talk about yeah. this, you probably would assume that it's just an avatar. Right. Okay. So we have our Cyclops. Yeah. We have a count of our Cyclops attendees in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, from there, he, that, that thing looks like an avatar. That's great. Okay. Here's because it's so zoomed in. <laughs> now I would like to know, who are some designers that inspire you, Mustafa? Um... Some designers that inspire me. I would say that, as cliche as it sounds, I I get inspired by Sam. Sam Anderson. Sam Anderson Sam inspires me. Sam. Not I don't know if Sam's the channel or but chat, but he. He's he a super nice. He is super nice. He is super nice. He's so friendly. Yeah. And so yeah, he's he's like a. We're we're both starting off. In our career and like were you both, growing up, were you were both in the same uh, school, right? Yeah. You guys both went to the same school. Yeah, went to the same school, MCCA, same class. Yep, yep. Um, so yeah. he's he's one person that I'm just like, you know, Aww. Sam is so nice. I love Sam. He's yeah. great. He's also our host for the uh, <laughs> yeah. daily creative challenge this week. So if you're curious who the stuff is talking about, go check he's out He's talking about Sam, yeah. who has been introducing it. And yes, Val, we do love Sam. Yeah. Hi, Sam. Sam's the best. Yep. Yep. Great. Um, oh, or where do you find inspiration if it's not a specific designer? Where do you find your inspiration? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, there's like celebrity designers, but I, uh, yes. I think I'm inspired by the designers I know. The designers that I know their story, like how they mm -hmm. got to where they are, what they overcame yeah. to become designers. Um, well, now that you've said that, I want to know what your story is. So my story is really random. I actually, for the <laughs> longest time, wanted to, I think when I was in high school, I was mm -hmm. playing around with either being a lawyer or like some sort of scientist person. And then um, 
randomly a designer came to the city that I'm from, uh, Selma, Alabama, mm -hmm. and gave a talk and introduced us all to the world of design. And it was sort of in that random chance meeting this designer in Alabama that I, I found out about design and decided that's what I wanted to do. That's really awesome. I mean, that's how it starts, right? That's yeah. why people go out there and they give those talks yeah. and interviews. You'd be surprised how many people don't know about the world of design yeah. or specifically like, you know, I talk to some friends and family all the time who are like, I don't even know what UX means, mm -hmm. kind of, sort of. And then they just assume that what they see on their phones are just, they just populate from <laughs> yeah. like engineering wizards and that's it. And right. it's like, they don't realize that there's a whole discipline of people who are out there trying to understand how you engage with these things mm -hmm. and how you use technology and how you familiarize yourself in yeah. navigating them. So definitely. And yes, Jason, love what Howard does. Howard is also fantastic, wonderful um, evangelist of ours on XD. He's actually been cooking up some wonderful demos that he will be showing sometime in the near future, I believe, and they are so exciting. I cannot wait, um, really cool stuff. So very talented too. But yeah, so designer came to your hometown, gave mm -hmm. a talk, opened up to your world, moved out to the Bay, yeah. <laughs> started learning about design, and here you are. Yeah, I actually was considering industrial design. Oh yeah? Because he was an industrial designer. Oh, okay. And it wasn't until I started looking at design schools that mm -hmm. I found interaction design, mm -hmm. and just hearing what they were doing, and sort of like, that like cheesy if you're from the bay area like uh, yeah let's design the future let's yeah, change yeah. the world so i was like i bought into that and <laughs> <laughs> i was like this is what i want to do um and it's it's been it's been great because yeah. so many so many cool experiences have come from that decision um, awesome what what is what is your story oh I was gonna I just keep asking you questions <laughs> about how awesome you are. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Genuinely about curious your, about your... me. Um, yeah, I uh, I think it's funny. So when I go out and I ask this question to people, how many people like are self-taught and how many people go to school? There are a lot of people who are going to school for this now. Um, I'm I'm of the I feel like the the dying generation of self-taught <laughs> people now. Um, really, I feel like a lot of people. Are, are also self-taught as well. I, yeah, I think that there's um, definitely still a lot of people there, but I do think there's a lot more people who go through a program, you know, mm, like what yeah. you do, because it's, and it's awesome. That wasn't there when I was, yeah, that true. wasn't there when I was learning design. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I went to school for a completely different thing. And then um, I graduated out of the recession of 08. And then there were no jobs. So I was eating Cheerios with the family, thinking yeah. about what I want to do in life. Actually, not Cheerios, probably more like SpaghettiOs and rice. And and then from there, I basically um, saw a random pamphlet that was like, hey, do you want to do graphic design or learn about web design? And I was like, oh, maybe. I had actually been, um, I'd actually been using Photoshop since I was like in high school because um, I was really into digital painting. Actually. So um, you won't be able to find my work because it's <laughs> different handle, different time. But <laughs> but I used to do a lot of like desktop wallpapers and draw things. I'm really into anime, so and I know Val's too. Ooh. And so um, I would do a lot of art, and then I used that skill, basically a Photoshop, and then applied it to making really bad logos for a while, nice. and then transitioned into design from there. And, and then here I am. Nice. So That's super cool. Meandered my way through to here. Um, so yeah, they're actually, it's funny that your background's in industry, uh, industrial design, Justin says, my background's in industrial design too. Um, because of the fact that, you know, I actually see that there's a lot of people who have either industrial design backgrounds, architectural backgrounds, yeah. some sort of background mm -hmm. that has to do with the flavor of like people and systems and such. Yeah. And things that they work in, so. I will say that when I see work from people who previously were in architecture, mm -hmm. I think they tend to be really great right? designers. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. it is. Yeah, we have a joke going yeah. on our team that we have a couple failed architects who, <laughs> who went to school for architecture and, 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 and interaction design. Isn't that funny how that works, yeah, though? Yeah, it, it is. Mm -hmm. You never really know what 
what you're, you're gonna end up doing. You really don't, which is hilarious, because I remember growing up in my family and my parents were just pounding into me that you've got three tracks in life. <laughs> and this isn't one of them. This isn't one of them. <laughs> and, and you really just, you just have to get, I think you just have to get yourself out there. Yeah. You know, you just have to, you're right, like part of it is just exposure to like all the different things yeah. that are that are around there. And, um, and yeah, I mean, very, 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 everyone has a different way of getting to where they are. And it's a constant journey. Who knows where we'll be 10 years from now even. I agree. Right? So, and yes, great self-taught people, Anissa. And uh, definitely think that there's a lot of great stuff on the web. Mm -hmm. If you do want to get into design, you know, our stream is actually full of so many people of so many different levels and experience. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think it's a great time to be a designer because you have I so agree. many resources for that. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Comp sci backgrounds, Julia, awesome. I love comp sci background people. Yeah. So, such great, there's so many great models that come with um, with comp sci. Mm -hmm. Just algorithms alone. Algorithms and how to solve for them. So, great stuff. Look at how good this looks. Oh my goodness. I want live episodes now. <laughs> <laughs> I want them now, I want them live. That's beautiful. All right. So you don't you haven't actually heard any of these podcasts? I'm like, what is Love Taps? I've never heard of Love Taps. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know if this is even appropriate. So just want to throw it out there. I have not heard this. Yes, please this course thing. correct us, chat, yes. if you think that there should be a better podcast to feature. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we know not what we put on here. We know not. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So there's a stream coming on here. You mm -hmm. can reply it. Very fun. I think, oh, actually. Since you don't want this to the stream to go all the way up to the top, mm -hmm. show like some sort of break off point and yeah. maybe they get dimmer. So first I'll group this and then <laughs> like I love I love bubble. I love bubble. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my naming convention. Um, and then maybe make that like sixty five, and then everything past this mm -hmm. will sort of yeah. decrease in opacity. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So kind of, it just starts to fade away gracefully. Yeah. Very cool. As you get closer and closer. Um, and yes, Richard, there is no clear cut process in terms of getting into UX and UI. I totally concur. Even yeah. 10 years into it, like in terms of seeing this industry evolve, it's only been around for 20 years, pretty much, you know. Um, it's, it's constantly evolving for sure. And Joe has, says, bit of both coding and web development through a program, UI, UX, I'm learning as I go, does this count as training? I mean, I think training aside, you know, if you're in, whether you're in a program specifically or learning on the go or mm -hmm. doing it ad hoc or learning from a real life mentor, I think that's all training yeah. at the end of the day, right? Start, oh my goodness, Anissa started off in automotive design, Whoa. then went to gra graphic design, then to web design, then to web dev, then to social media, then to video production. What an amazing path, that yeah. is so cool. And there's, there's still a string there, right? And all of that in terms of how it's all connected. So yeah. psychology background, yep, very, very cool. And Nick Nam says, I feel afraid to share my works in my online portfolio. You know, I I think that that happens a lot and there are a lot of ways to just, um, you know, take opportunities. We actually do portfolio reviews on the stream. So always feel free to throw them in there. But you know, the first step is just getting your work out there, right? Yeah. For what it's worth, everyone's first step is terrible. Yeah, I... I, I was, speak for the chat. <laughs> I was, right, I was debating on whether I was gonna show my first sort of UX UI design project. It mm -hmm. was this um, like explorational yeah. case study called uh, Pocket. And it was this app that I was trying to create that would allow you to sort of search using uh, augmented reality or something like that. Mm -hmm. But this was like in 2013 or something like that. <laughs> And I was doing wireframes and all this other stuff. And it just, going back and looking at that, I'm like, oh gosh, it's cringe. But I learned a lot, kept <laughs> kept going from there and just kept learning. And then I would say just don't give up, just continue to create. That's good, don't that's, those are great tips. 
I mean, I think people focus on that end state of the portfolio so much and so much of it is, so much of just in general when you zoom out of being a great designer is really just about the journey of yeah. learning and making those mistakes. Like how can you learn if you don't make those mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And so great icebreaker is just, with designers by the way, is just showing your first piece of anything, whether it be a logo you design or something. I, I pretty much lock those away in a folder that I then set the private on the desktop. <laughs> but every now and then I'm like, look, you can just, you can go anywhere. Right. <laughs> you can do anything. You can look do anything, especially from. when you see this, this yeah. garbage. Right. You just like never give up. Mm -hmm. never, never Greetings stop. from Russia. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yes. Jason started with web dev and then English and then graphic design, then front end, uh, front dev, front dev, and then UX and then here. You know, it's so good that you had um, English, Jason. I feel like in general, there's a lot you learn in terms of how you tell a story, mm -hmm. how you understand what a good story is, how you articulate that, yeah. and how you're able, that's, that's just so much of the job, right? Just yeah. selling that story and being able to articulate it, almost as much as actually putting the pixels on an artboard. Right. I think we all bring um, a different sort of skill to teams. Mm -hmm. So I see we have a couple people joining us that are newer to the stream. So again, um, you're with us with Mustafa today on live and um, he is designing a couple wonderful features around live podcasts and reinventing the IA of Spotify's app. So, and I think pretty soon we'll be prototyping some of this and bringing it to uh, yeah. bringing it to life, right? Awesome. Yeah, right now I'm just getting into the, the nitty gritty of mm -hmm. how can I make this look really nice? <laughs> it already looks really nice. <laughs> Nicer. It already yeah. looks yeah, great. Look Even username nice totally agrees that it looks nice. <laughs> <I> totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look at this username. Let's pull from the chat. Let's call them, yeah. There are a bunch, bunch, bunch of people there, yep. This is Carlos. Carlos. I love, is this meta? I love this conversation. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love this conversation on the stream. <laughs> And Chris asks Val if they if she's used Fresco. Oh my goodness, Val has. I'm not surprised. Val is, by the way, not only our fantastic moderator, but she is also an incredibly talented artist. Whoa. You see her on Instagram. I was just mind blown when I saw her work. I was like, wow. That's awesome. So good. Yes. And if you don't know what Fresco is, it's the latest app that um, we just released. Um, and it's this beautiful iPad painting app that lets you have just the most expressive brushes on digital. It's like, for me, a digital does, like artist, a dream come true, because mm -hmm. I remember days when I used to really just paint out of Photoshop, which is also awesome, but, but Fresco is like super next level. And man, industry's really come a long way from gigantic Cintiqs and things <laughs> where you're like drying on canvas to like this portable sort of thing. Yeah. It's amazing. Who is Carlos? He's just some random name. This is a real person? Actually, yeah, I pulled it from one of the POs of my company. Okay. His name, Carlos. Awesome. It's very hard for me to think of like fictional names without immediately thinking of people that I know. <laughs> I've been trying to, um, so actually kind of relate to our daily challenge. If you've been following other streams and such, um, ethics have been coming up a lot. We had. Um, World Interaction Design Day just the other week around the oh, subject yeah. of ethics. And, you know, it's funny because historically placeholder text has been very much um, like you just pick whoever you, who you, who you know, but um, gender neutral names, mm -hmm. trying to kind of pick something a bit more agnostic that can represent any larger subset of people, yeah. you know, are all really great ways for us to do our part, you know, just trying to really represent all of our users right. at the end of the day, right? So Exactly. Yes. That was super important to be inclusive. 
And does Mustafa care about numbers, or is it okay to eyeball the shape positions? So, I personally don't put that much effort into keeping up with numbers, um, but it is super important. I think in at my job, it's a little bit more, you know, based on numbers, but I don't know. I think in general, I don't particularly pay attention to numbers that much. Mm -hmm. It's like, if it's, what do you think? Are you a numbers? What person? do I think? I was like, what do I think if it's <laughs> a numbers person? Um, I think it depends on the part of your process, right? I think it depends also on the type of person you are and how you think through creating something from zero to five, mm -hmm. you know, zero to five percent. I think some people, I think it kind of shows in the way that people tackle problems even, right? Like. I draw, it's where I started, so I sketch on paper. Mm -hmm. I love to just draw and just go crazy. And so for me, um, starting with that kind of systematic sort of rigor is not natural to my process. But, but then what I do is I make sure to incorporate it at the very end mm -hmm. and then make sure it's consistently aligned, especially if it's part of a larger system. But mm -hmm. I know people who are completely the opposite actually, who are like, you know, they actually start from a model that's very um, organized and has a scale to it, right? Like, you hear a lot about like typography scales, and you hear a lot about how they relate to music mm -hmm. scales and such. And, and so, I think different people think about it differently. For the most part, I'm I'm pretty just like raw and organic when I start, and then I align it to numbers. But I know a lot of people do it the other way too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's how I would describe my process is is just organic. And then if I'm passing it off to like a developer at the company, then I try to make sure things mm -hmm. line up. Yeah, and that, you know, sometimes it also depends on what you're designing for, right? If you're just designing to conceptualize something, mm -hmm. that speed and iteration and that kind of more messy state is, is necessary for that. If you're planning on, you know, building something that is definitely like streamlined into some sort of production that's gonna get shipped, you definitely have to make sure that yeah. it, it makes sense, right? <laughs> right? So, definitely. And Nick's joining us and saying that Nick just discovered Adobe Live and it's awesome watching how people work compared to me. I I love it too, Nick. I think yeah. it's it's really awesome seeing different people's creative processes. Look at that pink. That's lovely. And it works well with the green still. Contrast. Surprise. That's always the struggle when you <laughs> create things and then you're like, well, what is the most efficient way to change everything. Yeah. What are you trying to change? So, first I'm trying to see if this is the artboard that is mm -hmm. the gradient. Yes, the artboard. Um, okay. yeah. Starboard. Mm -hmm. so I guess. Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah, like, what is the most efficient way to <laughs> like replicate this gradient? Well, there's a couple things. I guess like also depends on how you design. I mean, I think that um, one thing you could do is you could turn it into a um, a color swatch. So by clicking on the artboard. And then going to the asset panel, which is down there. Yep. You can just hit the plus on the colors on top, and it will add you a gradient. So um, that nice. bottom one right there is a gradient. So you can always just click on that, and it'll adopt it. And you know, you'll have to tweak the angle to however you want, but it's literally the colors that you just specified. Nice. So that's one way to do it. The, mm -hmm. the, the 
Nice. So super quick. Yeah, I'm a really big fan of just kind of doing it that way. Um, the other nice thing about the color palette is that it's a global, so it picks up um, every instance of it. So, for example, your the live color that's red, it shows up as um, you know what does it say FD five six five six. But if you change that, it'll change them all. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And Nickham says, "Do you did you know that pink is actually more of a male color according to Chinese historical art methodology? Did not know that. Wow. That's cool. We have a couple teachers in the chat as well. <laughs> Jason started to teach a course about XD this week at work. First time teaching something to a group of people. It's nice, and the more you teach, the more you learn. Yes. Definitely awesome. Thanks for teaching it. I, I think that um, one thing I often try to challenge our more senior designers to do is to do more teaching mm -hmm. because it actually refines your own skills in the process. Look at that. So we're going with pink for everything. Um, pink background and then I'm playing with like opacity yep. to incorporate it. Mm -hmm. but I think oh, that's actually that color. And Nick, we are not the hosts every time. Um, our hosts switch out for Adobe Live um, on the regular. There's a lot of a lot of us, um, and and also we always have different guests come on and sometimes return guests. So mm -hmm. um, so that way everyone can see the variety of you know people, processes, all sorts of things. So yeah. Okay, so I think I have it in a pretty decent place. So let me. Kerwin was suggesting that you might want to change the colors per podcast, maybe. What do you think about that? Per podcast? I think that's kind of the idea, isn't it? Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I always love people typing while being watched. I <laughs> know, <laughs> it's so stressful. If you've ever, I mean, everybody has probably had this happen where they're like typing or they're editing and someone's over their shoulder. And for some reason, just the idea of someone <laughs> looking at you while you're typing something <laughs> makes you actually mess up on the typing right. more. Like, stop looking at how I type. Stop looking at me. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, oh, so we do have different gradients for podcasts. Yeah, Fantastic. It's, it's, basically it's so pretty. Yes. And if you guys have any questions in the chat that you want to ask Mustafa, please feel free to throw them in at any time. Yes. Pick his brain, understand the inner workings of this fantastic designer. Yeah, I'm just assuming that most of the things I'm doing are kind of universal, but let me know if you are wondering what shortcuts I'm pressing. Mm -hmm. or I think most people do things, everybody does it differently, just a little yeah. differently. It's very interesting. Why don't you use a mouse? <laughs> That's a good question. And Designer Deepon says that I wish he chose some better fonts for this. I guess SF Pro Display is better than this Gibson font. Mm. You're not a fan of the Gibson? <laughs> you know, typography is always one of those, those highly debated topics of, you know, what font makes the most sense to use, and yeah. what's the most clear? Is Gibson a go-to, or a, you know? No, it's not. I think Gibson was one that I felt was close to circular, which is what Spotify I see. uses. Yep, yep. That's right, because we're emulating Spotify's design yeah. here. Mm-hmm. But SF Pro is nice. We we use something similar. Mm-hmm. So now you have all these screens. Let's see how we can make them interactive. 
Yeah, so maybe we could recap actually. So the so we're looking at this new experience on the home page, right? Yeah. So on the home page, we've, we've incorporated this way to quickly get to podcasts by just pressing this toggle button. Then once you're in the podcast, you have a different view from the music. So you have a new episode tab mm -hmm. where you can view or a section where you can view snippets of updated episodes to mm -hmm. podcasts. And then you can see here where you have live episodes. Mm -hmm. And then here is what you see once you click on a preview. You see like these 30 second clips mm -hmm. and then you have the option to go to the actual episode mm -hmm. and then this is the layout for viewing the actual episode to play and then it, once you go to a live episode here mm -hmm. the idea is it'll take you here where you can see the chat you can reply reply to people and interact with the conversation nice so Adobe's pretty cool in that you can quickly prototype. Oh, you used the shortcut for that. Oh yeah, if you press you control tab, you can, on Mac, you mm -hmm. can quickly go to the prototype tab. Are you a big shortcut person? I am a, a shortcut person. <laughs> Just trying to save time. Um, and then want to connect this to this one. Mm -hmm. And want it to be a tap trigger transition. So let's see. Shadow the box. Yeah. Let's see if we do that. So auto animate. Now let's play it. Look at that. Yeah, right out of the box, you can quickly do wow. some some pretty sleek prototypes. So then, if you wanted to do this one. I love auto animate. It makes life so yeah. much easier. It allows you to like really quickly yeah. express an idea without having to worry yes. about shifting all of these elements down yeah. the page and all of that. You can just simply let Mm -hmm. XD do the hard work, do the heavy lifting. Yeah, sometimes I just basically make crazy things from one artboard to the other, and then I just look at that. Oh, how beautiful that is. And that took like five seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. It's just, sometimes it just surprises me. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted without <laughs> knowing it. Yep. Right. Yeah, and if you're new to using XD, it's a, it's a feature underneath our prototyping mode where you basically can just Go between two artboards, and then yeah, XD basically just the, does the work, looks at what the difference is between the two artboards, mm -hmm. and makes some assumptions. And then yeah, you make the trigger. Or I'm sorry, you make the actual um, type of thing an artboard, and then from there just does things, eases things, or moves things, or sh shrinks things, whatever it is that is a change. So so that drop down works now, and now we're moving to podcast. Nice little uh, panning experience, I see. Yeah, I'm trying to do panning. Cool. Nice, yep. So let's see, let's see where the holes are. Do that. Yep, and then you got a podcast, nice. And then you have a night. Look at that drag animation. Yeah. Yes. So simple. Go through. Feels great. View the episodes. Nice. See all these previews. Mm-hmm. Um, As you can see, it's super intuitive, super easy to do something that is could be very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. um, so see. So you click here. You go here. Nice. And that's a tap. Mm. 
And so if you're not familiar with what is happening right now, Mustafa is looking at the property inspector on the right, mm -hmm. a prototype mode and kind of selecting the different options between you know, the trigger, which is kind of identifying if it's like a tapping trigger or like a dragging trigger, um, as well as the kind of motion transitions and such. So that beautiful dragging that you see there. And then look, okay. it went to that screen. Oh, because people are going to be able to swipe, swipe. So like at the next preview. I see. So then just go through, connect them. Mm -hmm. And then I'm always constantly going back and checking to see yeah. <laughs> if I forgot. No, that's great. I mean, that's uh, just trying to make that work. Yep. Tear, mm. Tears in my eyes, says Designer T Pun. I love drag animation in XD. <laughs> Eric says this looks amazing. I agree. I think it's really coming together and looking awesome. Back. Then once you want to allow someone to go to the episode, mm -hmm. they can come here. Ah, right. So once they commit to that, mm hmm. And then let's get out and show this some love. Yep. Let's see. Let's see. A lot of blue, so. Ah, yep. A lot of people love the full screen chat overlay you have going. I agree. I think it's very nice looking. Thank you, Miguel. Looks great. I agree. Definitely. So cool. Nice. Yeah, probably bring this up a little bit. If you're on this, you probably need this. So bring this back. This oh, I see. On the bottom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You're, you're probably gonna be on this screen. Right. Or maybe not. <laughs> I want to forget any UI elements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this Just want to make that consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. to some podcasts. Yep. You can see all of these New updates. Episodes. Very cool. So I'm gonna start that, go in, and listen to that. Go to episode. Um, yes. Might be because, what's the trigger? Is it a tap or is it a, is it still drag or? Let's see. Oh, I might be clicking on that. Yeah, so. you gotta 
press hat mode, yep. So the actual button, I think you have to select, this is just the button itself. That is, oh, I think it's, I think it's drag, yeah. So to change it yeah. to tap. Mm -hmm. Should work there. Yep. I go to listen to it. Mm hmm. Let's see. And maybe press X. And go back to mm -hmm. the home page. And then I start looking at these love tap. <laughs> <laughs> they want to go to this live stream of love taps. Who knows what that is? Oh, so far away. So then they come here. Mm -hmm. um, no, actually. Oh, I see. So a person will tap on that and then they will have the ability to respond. Yeah. I see. And Nick them asks, do you guys use style guides by any chance? We do, or I do. <laughs> um, I'm freehanding it now, but <laughs> <laughs> we but do. But normally. Normally, you can come here, you can see all these different styles, mm -hmm. colors. Uh, it, it definitely saves time. Mm -hmm. Do you all at Adobe have like a universal file that everyone just... Files. Files. We have many. Well, we have a lot of products. We have a lot of different UIs that come from different generations of products and, mm -hmm. and needs. So, but we definitely have um, our own internal design system, which is called Spectrum. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, a lot of the concepts you see, a lot of the UI comes from that, for sure. Then maybe for this, this could like pop up from the bottom. So, mm. well first let me group it. Then name it so I can find it later. Zara Dupan says, in his screen, I'm seeing 1.12 p.m. and here it's 1.45 p.m. <laughs> where I'm living. Wow. Wow, thank you for tuning in so late with yeah, us. We really you. appreciate it. Hopefully you won't be dreaming of love taps, whatever <laughs> this podcast is. <gasps> uh, Let's see if this works. So, go back, check the interaction. Mm -hmm. Yep, tap, auto animate. Yeah. Comes up. Nice. Maybe transition time should change. Well, there was no easing. Let's see. Ah, oh, lovely. And you said you're a uh, shortcut person. Um, so I noticed you're hitting the play button and if you hit command return, it actually oh, nice. pulls up the uh, the preview window that you're looking for. So oh, I love shortcuts too. Command, there you go. It'll show you what's whatever current artboard selection you have, nice. so. Okay. Look at that. Pop up to reply. Mm -hmm. Then hit the reply. Then it, it goes to the keyboard. Probably want this to be on this page. Because after you do, once you hit reply, mm -hmm. you probably want this to go down at this point and go back. 
And as Mustafa is doing this, just as a reminder for those of you who are doing our daily challenge, uh, the RXD Creative Challenge, we are doing it on the theme of making a dashboard to encourage people to see their usage around energy, waste, and water. And so just what those levels are and trying to incorporate some sort of gamification in mm -hmm. to encourage people, um, whether you're in the same building or community, um, encourage people to be aware and smarter about how they um, utilize their resources. And so uh, the challenge is just creating an experience that shows that, that shows what that dashboard could look like. And all you need to do is post that in our Discord channel under the current challenge, and we'll be taking a look at those shortly um, and reviewing them and giving some feedback live on the stream. Justin says, perhaps move up the replay model in front of the message. Um, what was the? The replay model in front of the message. So I think, or maybe he meant reply, but that thing probably in front of the message. I don't know. I don't know, Justin. Maybe you could be more uh, more specific on on if you're talking about that the the reply there. Look at that. Reply. Nice. So then you can go back. Lovely. of the gradients. Right, go <laughs> back to the Go back to the monochromatic <laughs> black and white. Yes, and Justin was clarifying the reply, yep. So, just a thought, Mr. Fox. Yep. So, nice, you have your podcast. You can see your latest things. You can go to one of these, and then, yep, reply. Fantastic. Going. Looks like we're almost done with this prototype. Yes. Lots of dot, dot, dots. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the prediction type would be. <laughs> Maybe it's like super smart. It's like, love. Love. <laughs> <laughs> Live, laugh, love. Yep. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's suggesting that it actually happens so much. So, right, I um, I don't know if I should be admitting this right now. It's being recorded. Um, no, but like you know, when someone's texting you and then uh, you look at your message and you're on the go and and then like they conveniently it's like you just hit one of those buttons and it's a reply like an emoji. Yeah. I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah, I just wanted to send that smile emoji. Right. It's pretty smart. Except one time I got called out for it. I was, they were like, oh, no. they were like, you don't normally say that. And I was like, you're totally <laughs> right. Or what did they say? They say, you don't put punctuation at the end of your short messages. And I was wow, like, that person really knows you. <sighs> I don't know. I don't remember who said it, but, but it was very astute. I was like, geez, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're you right. Don't, I should have been like, you don't know me. You're right. <laughs> Why are you like you trying to switch up your me. style on the fly? I'm like, yeah. now I'm gonna punctuate I'm all I'm trying messages. something new. Right. <laughs> punctuation is interesting though, right? Like even if you look in the chat right now, most people don't have punctuation going, except for Kerwin, who just announced that Kerwin really loves Shrek specifically. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, punctuation's not really much of a, a thing when you're casually chatting and yeah. talking. And the minute, I, I do it too, where like even to this day, like someone writes me a sentence, like in Slack, and then there's a period at the end of it, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> this is a serious conversation. Right. I have to use like scroll up 
and then realize that they are actually just, uh, that they just always use punctuation, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh. You're or like, if they don't, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need that clarification, how formal is this? Yeah, exactly. Are you mad? Right. <laughs> are we okay? <laughs> No, oftentimes, like, when, when I can't respond to a phone call, yes. I don't do the, like, hang up but respond with the text thing. Like, sorry, I can't talk right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, even when I do that, I, I now feel the need to, um, I don't know, just guilt. But even when I say something like that, I just put, a, like, a sad face or something. <laughs> or, like, like, a, like, a little bit more. Because, you know, blow. <laughs> when you get the message that's, like, sorry, I can't talk or, like, busy. Yeah. And it's just words, even then you're, like. Okay. <laughs> I always feel like an emoji softens the blow on everything. Agree. <laughs> emojis, emojis soften the blow. Uh, yeah. Oh, I love Shrek was his suggestions, was Kerwin's suggestions for autocorrect. I see. I <laughs> <laughs> Kerwin, we thought you were just declaring your love for right, Shrek, I was which like, would have been totally cool, too. Uh, yeah, because that movie is amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was seeing on Twitter something about Shrek. I don't know really? if Shrek is, like, trending Recently. or something. Ah. Yes, periods on last sentences often do indicate that folks are maybe just a bit irate. But I do have a couple colleagues who just love just to write, writing proper sentences mm -hmm. with capitals and, and periods. And and for me, I just have to always remember that they're one of those people. And then I... <laughs> you don't take it. You don't take too much offense to their period and look into <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. So I added like a account with like a no end mm -hmm. time because these live podcasts can go go as long as as a person is opening them mm. up for so I added that as like tweaks I'm trying to push this further of yeah how this actually work as a, a product mm -hmm. So let's try it again. Let's see if we can go through. Ooh, full screen. <laughs> Serious business. Podcast. Yep. Uh, that works lovely. Pushes that. I love how it pushes down the content. It's yeah, great. that's great. And then you have this dragging, the new so episodes. Oh, the gradients really do make those, the strokes around those um, really nice. Then, well. Got Mm-hmm. Podcast, yep. Post it there. And then yeah, new episode. Alright. So I was like, where did I miss the the <laughs> trigger? Oh yeah, the X. Let's see. Go back. It's there. It's there. Mm-hmm. Kerwin, Spotify does not have chats on live podcasts. It is Mustafa's very own invention, actually. Right. That's, that's the point. It is uh, Mustafa's podcast fan dream to have live chat. Yes, it would be so nice. It if would I be could, nice. Like, join the conversation for love taps. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's talk about love. <laughs> Come in, add this. Live love. Life. Live, 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 live laugh, life, love, love and um, or live, laugh, love, yeah. love. Um, instead of I love Shrek, you you don't want to use Kerwin's suggestion of I love Shrek. Let's go with it. <laughs> I think that was like a really. That was a subliminal messaging. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to chat with Carlos and you want to talk about Shrek? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, what? Um. It's like now I should just like continue this on and just do a whole bunch of <laughs> pose between Carlos and <laughs> Carlos. It's gonna reply. Wait, why are we talking about Shrek suddenly? <laughs> I don't understand. Right. It's like okay. Then, yeah, you like you want to tell Carlos? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love Shrek. Shrek. I don't know why. <laughs> It's somehow that the idea came into my head right. through autofill. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what was the child saying before? The child was like, I love it, totally agree. What do you think like about helping boundaries? And you just be like, <laughs> like, I love Shrek. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> I don't understand. Nobody does. Yeah, so we just troll the chat. <laughs> oh, so, man. Um, Nick Nam asks, does Mustafa love Kendrick? Well? I do. I'm assuming Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> but yeah. if you mean Kendrick Lamar, I do love Kendrick. If you mean another Kendrick, we don't know. Yeah, specify, do you mean Kendrick Lamar or what Kendrick you're referring to? <laughs> but I think, since we're talking about Spotify, you mean Kendrick Lamar. Yes. Joe writes that punctuation is necessary. That's why people can't speak or write properly now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I read that our recent IQ is decreasing because we rarely write nowadays. Wow. Oh, that's funny. I actually just recently, um, I still write cursive all the time. Well, chicken scratch, but I like <laughs> to think it's cursive. Other people just think it's just gibberish. Um, yeah, I was gonna they ask. Don't, they don't do that anymore. Yeah, I was gonna ask about cursive. I, I don't usually write cursive mm -hmm. unless I'm trying to write really fast mm -hmm. or I'm signing for yeah, like- your signature. Yeah, yeah on a receipt yeah. at a restaurant. I, I just love how it looks. I think in general, I'm also a fan of serifs more than I am of like sans serifs, so like, mm. I like how that all looks. I think yeah. it's very beautiful. I think it's a, I think it's gonna become an art form that will get lost over time. Uh, I, don't know, I don't even know if elementary schools like require. They don't. I heard they don't. Interesting. Yeah, it makes me very sad. So will that be like years and years from now the new like? The new Sanskrit, basically. Yeah. I hope not. No, I hope not. But I but I actually did also relate to that note. Saw some studies on how it's easier for people to read um, read things that are not in, in cursive or serif or things like that, just because it's like sans serif is easier to screen, mm. easy, more familiar um, and such in print. Um, but yeah, and you know what? That being said, we are now getting ready to do our design feedback. We are at the top of the hour. Um, maybe we can just go through your prototype really quickly one last time, okay? Or we can go, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go through your prototype one more time and then we'll go into the challenges. Okay, so let's start. So you have this way to go from music to podcast really quickly. Then you have this list of episode updates to your favorite podcast. You click into it, you see these previews, mm -hmm. you want to go to an episode go to an episode, then you can go back to the home page <laughs> and where's the home page? Then when you're here, go to a live stream, mm -hmm. a live podcast. This one is Love Taps. I don't know what we're talking about because <laughs> We're talking about Shrek. We're talking about Shrek. Carlos, <laughs> I love Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so that's the prototype, going through, yes. seeing these previews, and then seeing the chat awesome. on a live podcast. Very awesome. Looks lovely. I love the rich interactions. The gradients are great. The polish is fantastic. I think this is something we should see someday. I hope. I hope. I hope my podcast is making a thing. Yes. Awesome. And so with that, let's actually kind of go through and look at some of the daily challenges that have come. I'm excited. All right, so, and you know, still a second, feel free to throw in some of the daily challenges um, in the Discord channel. I A couple of these are actually just videos, but I'm just gonna start with, um, let's see, daily challenge two. Daily challenge two. So these are all actually from yesterday's daily challenge, we, which we are very familiar with. Yeah. So maybe we should just look at those. So, um, so let's see. This is actually day one. Um, this one is from today. I'm gonna just go ahead and open this in full screen here. Actually, start from the beginning. So you log in. This is daily challenge one, which is actually the daily challenge around taking using a photo editing app and then being able to promote the idea of composting. Mm -hmm. So take a picture, people can take a picture of composting and they oh, can nice. throw in through drag a sticker. I love that actually, that's yeah, super fun. That is I fun. like that, that's really nice, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then hit okay and then success and then they post it to the community and it has that recycling sort of filter on the top. Very cool. That is super cool. It like encourages the sort of community 
to be involved in the process. Mm-hmm. I really like the the animations. I like the light green and dark green color scheme. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I think, uh, let's see, let's go back to the video a little bit. So, yeah, the colors are very nice. I think that just great use of just the dragging between these, uh, between the stickers for the filter that you're putting on the photo. Very creative, I love that. Yeah. Um, feels like you could just kind of explore it in a way. And then, yeah, right here. Yeah, very that's, cool that's stuff. Really cool. I think that's super cool. Mm -hmm. Nice clean UI, able to pick the one you want to pick. Mm -hmm. And then hit success and filters applied. Post that to the community and then ta da. You notice that people, when they make their videos, they always do the little circle thing like ta da, <laughs> I'm done. I just realized I do that too. <laughs> Is that like I'm the, like, we're done here. Right. <laughs> so. Is that like the prototype version of a period? Like, <laughs> of a period. Do you see this? Yeah. It is awesome. Right. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Super cool. And that was submitted by. Um, by Labor Noir, so Label Noir. So thank you for your submission of challenge number yes. two on tagging sustainability. Um, awesome. All right, that was just the most recent one. Let's take a look at this one, which I think is the one I opened. No, this is new. So, oh no, this is totally the one I opened. So this is also from yesterday's creative challenge, mm -hmm. which is the idea of uh, encouraging composting through filters um, with a photo editing app. So we have a high level kind of challenge, nice. and then this, and then who, I feel like we actually saw this yesterday. Did we see this yesterday? Mm, no, wait. Oh, no, 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 it was a similar one. Right, 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 okay, great. So the mapping out the flow is like, you start something, you scan something, and you take a photo, and then you share it. So designs, step one is scanning the label here. Yep, and then from there, taking the picture. I really love this one for some reason. And then sharing it, yep, on every, very straightforward, yeah. And then here is the video. Let's see if I can make this full screen. Yes, excellent. All right, let's start over. So, new post. Oh, look at that movement. Look at that, nice. look at that, easing, that time. Oh, oh, love it. That loader is super, look at the animations, wow. And it's moving through time. And then she's, wow, you're dragging oh. it. This is, this is a very impressive prototype. Look at all of those animations. Sorted story, everywhere, share your story. And then that ability to pick the person at the end. I'm gonna do that one more time, because that was a lot of slick animation yeah. that, should not go through only once. We should appreciate this. This easing, for example, that that was very cool. It felt yeah. very real. And then this progress bar is fun. And I love the kind of like buildup of the of this of the information yeah. on top, talking about what exactly is happening as a result of yeah. what you're composting. And I really like the picture of the milk. And of like, the <laughs> I'm about to throw this away. It's like yeah, totally yeah. want to share this to Instagram and or sharing Facebook. That. I could totally see people who would actually probably use this app and then just immediately post it on all their channels because it's so descriptive, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really tells um, the information of the environmental impact you're, you're actually helping mm -hmm. through this. So very nice. Excellent job. This is um, Emma Sandberg. So great job, Emma. Okay, let's see. Day two done, let's see. All right, so adjusted some transitions, daily challenge number two. I think we saw this one already. This is, um, this is actually Label Noir. Oh, I'm sorry. So the earlier one was actually by W Squared, the first one we saw. This one's by Emma, and so this one is by Label Noir. So let me take a look at this and make it bigger. Ah, stop. Okay, here we go. Mm. Take a picture. Ah, also lovely dragging. Nice. Ah, I see they're using, um, they are using one of my favorite plugins, which is being able to bring in, Undraw, which is bringing in different animations, uh, art, uh, illustrations. illustrations, yep, in, so that's very cool. So that one went quickly, let's see it again. So we're here, 
the location. There are various photos of people doing things around um, composting. And then they're able to take a photo, in this case, of a plant. In the plant, they take the picture, they tag it. Oh, and so they pick a tag. Mm -hmm. And then they um, add <laughs> compost minion. That's cute. That is so cute. Um, and they can pick healthy earth. That's also nice. Or growing concepts. These are <laughs> clever titles. Wind energy, growing concepts. Oh, and then right there, plop there is that auto animate. I with, think that's really cool. With the little bounce in it. Let's look at that animation again. Love the bounce. Bam. It just kind of. Yeah. Yep. And it's so appropriate because it's like it's falling on <laughs> it's space falling on and space. it makes sense. It's a map. So. Yes. Right. And so there's that. And then here's the final concept. Beautiful. Great stuff. I love it. I think that um, in terms of auto animate, really kind of having that bird's eye view, like mm -hmm. you said, and just it dropping down is very, very cool. Yeah. And then I really do. Oh, look, it's because I'm clicking it this so you can actually see the build out. Nice. Um, the pictures and the drag and great use of um, using a plugin, especially for those those illustrations, the stickers, great yeah. stuff there. Yeah, I recognize this one. I actually just like used her in another thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh. I recognize that. Yeah. <laughs> Nameless illustration. Um, very cool. And that's it for that one. And then let's see. Oh, and we have one for day three, actually. Ooh, day nice. three challenge, Chipotle um, wrapper refund. Awesome. So let me actually just kind of get this to be fitting on here. So we have Chipotle, a wrapper reward program. Mm. Um, Let's see, Marcus is um, first place here with 168 points from five minutes ago. And it looks like there's families. Yeah, cat family, Will and Grace. I do like Will and Grace. <laughs> um, chili Peppers, <laughs> music. Chili. I see where your inspiration is being drawn from here. Um, <laughs> mortal Eaters and Big Fathers. And so let's see, the hot spots. Let's look at, let's look at what it is first. What is this? It is a wrapper reward program where we have a goal of 1 million wrappers to help save our planet. So join us by doing our part, saving the planet, bring us your used wrappers and earn free Chipotle for life. You just bring in wrappers and you get Chipotle for life. That sounds like heaven. <laughs> <laughs> that is very enticing. Yeah. And so bring us your napkins, your cardboards, your aluminum and your plastic. Awesome. So that sounds very enticing. It sounds too good to be true. <laughs> so how it works. Oh, look at that. Well, you. you. Oh, nice. Nice little ease and animation there. A little bump. I like how they use the branding. They definitely yeah. looks like Chipotle. Yeah. So, so we're in how it works. And here it's free Chipotle for life. And then from there we have our rankings. Oh, whoa, that was a lot of animation cool. at one time. I need to do it again. Yeah. So I wish I could almost like slow-mo it, like yeah, see that's all really, of the animation. That's really smooth <laughs> animation. So yeah, this takes us back to kind of our first page, right? So that we had originally seen. Yeah. All right, so they go here. They can see rankings. There's a gamification of encouraging people to turn in their wrappers. Marcus apparently is going to get Chipotle for life. <laughs> um, which is great. Great he's job, Marcus. Great. He's lucky. Mm -hmm. And then from here, we have regional. So let's see what just happened. From team, you can narrow it down into a view that's regional. I see. Mm. So not just your teams that you're following here, but the bigger regional team. So Carne Love. <laughs> just bean it. Just bean it? That is clever. Isn't queso, queso crazies. <laughs> oh my God. This person is very clever. Guaco macho. Guaco oh, macho. Oh man, bowl lovers. Just this is, bean it. This is making me hungry. Just bean it. I do kind of want some burritos now. I know. I'm 
Dang. Um, yeah, I love queso crazies. That one's that one's super clever. Yeah. I love it. Um, <laughs> Mike Schwartz. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Take this time to grab lunch. Excellent. All right. And so going to nationals. I am. Oh, I knew it. There would be more words. Um, spare me queso. Spare me. <laughs> um, Mas Grande. Well, Mas Grande, you know, traditional guac life. I see a fizzle mm, <laughs> of yeah. puns here. Carne Love and Chip Dippers. Chip Dippers. So, so yeah, so um, very clever, very clever content. Yes. Love it. Um, and, a, and a really good idea of having this sort of reward program from the business to encourage people to mm -hmm. properly dispose. Mm -hmm. No, it's great. So um, I would love a rewards program from places where you can just get free food for life because you're turning in. Right. That would that. be That'd be very, amazing. very awesome. So yeah. Any, um, any feedback though? Um, I think really smooth animations, maybe the the spacing could be like a little more concise, but really, really well, really put well together visually mm -hmm. in terms of like incorporating Chipotle's actually brand, actual branding mm -hmm. into the design. Nice, um, nice. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I especially love the, the puns for names. Oh, so good. <laughs> That's like. You had me at puns. You had me at the puns. Um, all right. And I think, let me just take a quick look. Um, it's not too late to submit your own challenge. I do see one more, actually, that was submitted earlier today. Let me just take a look. Is that just a picture? Updated font, actually, an update to the things. Oh, okay. There is one at 1019. Let's see what this one is real quick. That's so tiny. Stop. OK. This is a composting app. This is our daily challenge from yesterday, actually. Okay. You take a picture, ah ha ha. I wonder if Sam on a stream did a dragging. Yeah, oh, I see a consistent. great theme here. It's lovely though. Oh, look at the, the frills here, it's nice. So great use of the drag. I think that's a really big fan favorite for folks, mm -hmm. dragging through the animation there and doing that. Yep, nice. Good job. Awesome. I'm, I'm like trying to see where that would be. Where this location yeah, is? Yeah, where this location is. <laughs> you kind of wonder if everyone who's been working on, on their daily challenges went out to like and found <laughs> yeah. dumpsters and was like, this is going to be my, this is going to be my <laughs> picture. <laughs> so yes, fantastic submission though. Love the use of dragging, um, applying the filter on there. Um, fantastic job. So. Cool. Well, is, um, you know, feel free to keep working on the challenge today. Again, the challenge is around um, making a dashboard or some sort of experience that includes um, some essence of gamification mm -hmm. to encourage people to think about the waste or the energy or the water that they use and, and encourages people to be better about treating their environment. Uh, maybe to wrap up, you know, we can just take a look at your work uh, one more time. Yeah. And from there, we will we will we'll be done. So. So we started here. Mm -hmm. with some rough sketches of ideas on how we can more quickly or quickly get to the podcast. Section and those were and Spotify. those three were. Um, Different iterations, different versions, right? Yeah, so started off just incorporating a, a pattern that they already use mm -hmm. within their app, which is just these sort of tab bar text buttons. But then, um, like I said yesterday, there, it might break because there might be a usability issue with having these titles and then having this navigation being text as well. Mm -hmm. So then incorporate it with the I think it's not necessarily a standard, but pretty common practice of like having this tab bar. Navigation. Yeah. 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 With yeah. The, the bar underneath. Um, but decided to go with the logo button and text at the top that switches based on which view you're in. Mm -hmm. And then came down here. So this was, yep. And this is what we did yesterday, right? So yeah. making all of the, um, the IA and the interaction to switch between the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then 
here have the sketches for viewing this all right these previews of episodes and come here you can skip uh, back skip forward a little brief description you have more stuff here than what so did you originally on the live podcast I'm just looking at this sketch now you had you had more so would you be adding that in the future if you were to keep working on this yeah I think it's important to have like before you even go inside of this live podcast to, to know what sort of activity is going on mm, mm -hmm. so I think future iterations would definitely have some sort of counts related to how many comments are going, how many people, so you mm -hmm. know, okay, when I come in, I'm not just starting this chat, like there's a healthy chat going mm -hmm. on. I see some cursive Before. right there in trending, by the way. <laughs> I see a bit of that coming Love through. Love an exaggerated G. <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then came over here, details page for a podcast. And then this sort of flow for going All through right. the, yep. uh, the live chat Adding on to the, the, conversation. the podcast. There is no autofill with um, Loving Shrek or Live Life Love. No, here. these no. were all meaningful additions that came out. That came today. You can't like yeah. predict that on sketches. No, you can't. Well, you you know. You never know. Yeah, I don't think you have anything there, right? It's just like scribbles? Yeah, just scribbles. Okay, okay. So then you come here. This you is your wireframe. These wireframes of the functionality. Mm -hmm. um, I always want to make sure you remember the flip. Mm -hmm. And we're but, using Gilroy here because um, because of the fact that you didn't have circular, right? Yeah, Gibson want, is a similar Gibson, font right, to that's right. uh, okay. circular. Yep. Um, but you can use you know whichever font works in terms of keeping the UI mm -hmm. consistent. And then and this um, is already different from yesterday because uh, we incorporated some of that feedback. Yeah. Around the strokes. Yep. The live. Yep. Made the live red, and then changed it from that previous design, which was like a more horizontal rectangle mm -hmm, shape, mm -hmm. shape, into just like a square, and then it follows the current pattern of square. Mm -hmm. And we had a really nice discussion yesterday on square and circle with that. The Me's deeper the meaning of squares and creativity, <laughs> right. alongside some other very interesting conversations. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are a lot of squares in your UI. Yeah, a lot of squares, not a lot of rounding, because I'm going based off of how they handle squares within the app currently. Mm -hmm. um, and then these rough blocks that I use for icons, because sometimes when you're designing, you don't necessarily know what final icon, but you do want to make sure that you keep that space blocked off. Yep. Then you have these sort of bubbles for the chat yep. count. The soon-to-be avatar that ended up being made there on the yeah. spot. That is, still looks like a cyclops sometimes in my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you have these pops of green, which, you know, I think the rule is like to keep wireframes without color, but yeah. I don't know. I always end up adding some random color in for whatever reason. Well, sometimes you, you have all these boxes, right? And then it gets a little, <laughs> yeah. it gets a little too abstract. Yeah. Just like, what, what does that even mean? Yeah. I don't know anymore. So then you just added some color. Mm -hmm. And then today we've been working on fleshing out these um, the wireframes and adding in why. some color and some actual content to mm -hmm. see how it will, will look and behave. So then you come here, you see the icon, music, then once you press it, you see this drop down menu that allows you to switch between the views. You have some nice recently played <laughs> playlists here. <laughs> some of those photos are awesome. Yeah. Yep. I love this one. That oh, one's super cool. And then um, once you come to podcast, you have a different view mm -hmm. allowing you to view these sort of new episode updates yes. to your favorite podcast quickly see them in bite size mm -hmm. uh, and then you're able to go to the episode once you're in there and then you have a live episode section for um, your favorite podcast mm -hmm. coming from different mm -hmm. people then unbreakable smile by is Kelly. your theme is <laughs> the your theme, theme. Song. Mustafa's theme yeah it's so, who he is yeah so it's queued up he has an unbreakable um, smile. Yeah, and then you come, you see these uh, previews where a user can swipe through, mm -hmm. gradients that are related to the album artwork. Mm -hmm. And then you have like, our first trip to Hawaii. So maybe you have 
this this podcast that is like with their they talk about their love story or awesome. what they're going through like try to create content on the fly <laughs> <laughs> then um then love taps yeah then love and taps. love taps <laughs> well thank you for sharing all that very great stuff yeah. it's so awesome seeing it come to life it was fun <laughs> there were moments where we were looking at it like is it gonna end and, I know and it came full circle and it's yeah. lovely and I think the chat agrees that the work you've done here has been fantastic thank you all for coming to the chat it's yes been fun. it's been an absolute pleasure love the conversations we've had yeah um, and and that's pretty much a wrap so thank you for joining us until next time Thank you, Mustafa. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.